Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom of Odin. Today is the first video that I'm releasing that I filmed here while in Greece. So I've actually come to Greece only for four days and I filmed four videos while here and this is the first one you'll be seeing. Uh, so the main reason I came to Greece was actually to meet up with Trago or the artist known as Trago who's a musician and we're actually working on a collaborative song for the channel and it's specifically about Odin but it does have some Greek influence there as well. So that is the main reason I came here and the main video that will release um, from my time here here in Greece. So that'll come out here when the song is done. So we sang vocals for the song and we did a few other things, but when the song is done, that video will release and it'll show you the making of the song, play for the song as well. It'll have an interview with Trago, uh, which we actually, I, I have several interviews for him for the series of videos I have here. Because of course, while here in Greece, I wanted to explore the paganism, the mythology, what it was like here in Greece, what it is like here today to worship and honor old gods. And so naturally being a Norse pagan, these are not necessarily the deities I honor and venerate, but as a follower of Odin, I believe in wandering and I believe in experiencing other cultures. So it's been a pleasure to be here. And I have to say, it's absolutely beautiful here in Greece and the people are wonderfully nice. So the actual topic of today's video is modern contemporary paganism in Greece. So coming in here with only a few days, obviously I cannot capture the entire entire essence of Greek paganism, what it is here. I can only do so much research. Um, but the thing that I felt was very unique is I was actually able to meet a few Greek pagans and not even necessarily what you would think as far as like people honoring and venerating Zeus and Poseidon. I met an interesting mix of people who just follow pagan paths here. And I asked them a lot of questions and learned a lot from them. Uh, now, you know, they didn't want to be on interview and I didn't really push it in any way, but I want to share those experiences with you talking to people here from Greece, at least their stories. So understand the course this is just my perspective from a, a you know a limited conversation but also you know hearing from people that have lived here who obviously don't speak for all Greeks but again I wanted to give an interesting update at least my observations of contemporary Greek paganism while here uh, so I hope that's understood but I really think this would be an interesting subject because I'm really interested in learning in pagan practices at least in our modern world and and beyond here across anywhere in the world because I just find it absolutely fascinating I forgot to mention the city I'm actually in right now is Thessaloniki uh, uh, the, the history here is interesting. So a, a quick recap of the history here. Um, it has been around for a long time. It was founded by Alexander the Great. It was the power seat of Macedonia and has been owned and conquered by so many different groups throughout history. And so the walls you're actually seeing behind me here are Byzantine walls. So the Byzantine Empire built these walls. And all these walls are built from the stones from the old temples and, and other monuments that the Greeks built as well and the Romans built. So it's very interesting history here. Uh, so as far as the actual story behind Thessaloniki, I wanted to send that to Trago, who I asked, who had the story to tell. So here's him telling the story and the history of the city. So this, it's indeed a mythological layer attached to Thessaloniki. It's purely mythological because it's been historically verified that it's not true. But it's always great to have fun stories brought in by the, you know, the, the folk. So the story goes like this. Alexander the Great used to live around here. This was a part of his kingdom. So when he was away towards Persia and towards India to conquer the rest of the world, or unite the rest of the world, as we say, uh, his sister, called Thessaloniki, who took her name after the victory against the army of Thessaly, which is another region of Greece. So Niki is victory. Thessaly is the area, Thessaloniki is the victory against the Thessaly army, right? So that's what, where the name came from. And the myth goes like this. Alexander the Great had collected after a lot of battles, a special kind of water that brought in immortality to the, to the people that drank it. And he wanted to live forever and the rest of his family as well. But she spilled it by mistake. And because she was devastated that one day he would come back and she would see him die. She didn't want this to happen. She was very devastated. So she asked to the gods to turn her into an immortal being that will never be able to see anybody in family die. And they turned her into a mermaid. And ever since that, she is roaming into the seas and she's asking the sailors, have you seen Alexander? my brother and they say that she's still doing it today.
Now, when actually talking to the various pagans here in the city and around Greece, uh, you know, having these conversations, Christianity is still very prominent here in Greece. I mean, Greek Orthodoxy is here. This is the side of it. This is where it's around. And so they have to struggle a lot with the people who still believe with Greek Orthodoxy. And so a lot of people have misconception about paganism, even the traditional Greek polytheism that exists here. Now, I say polytheism because it seems like, for the most part, Greeks say Greek polytheism or Hellenistic polytheism rather than Greek paganism. Uh, so I will probably mix that up, but from what I understand, it's Hellenistic polytheism is what they prefer to be called. But for the most part, everyone I talked to here had a mixture of that, but they had a mixture of other things as well. Um, I talked to someone who's fairly Norse pagan. I talked to someone who's more Wicca and witchcraft based with some Celtic paganism thrown in there. Um, and then someone that was more eclectic. And then Trago himself is a little bit more specifically Hellenistic, but he doesn't actually adhere to any one set group. He kind of does his own thing. So there is a mix here. Just because we're in Greece doesn't mean everyone here practices Greek polytheism, Hellenistic polytheism, doesn't mean they all venerate the Greek gods. And that is something that I found very fascinating. And when asking about this, a lot of it just seems to be the fact that there is not a lot of information, or at least it's been kind of wiped away. But again, here's here's Trago with an interesting thing. Uh, during our interview, he was talking about, uh, you know, Greek culture and tradition, and how it's still fairly pagan at its core. So it's pretty weird um, that in modern Greece, most people are self-proclaimed proclaimed Christians, but they don't actually practice the religion. They're not spiritual at all. Most people in reality, they're either atheists or agnostics. And in my, my opinion, from my experience, they're mostly connected in reality, in actuality, with the pagan principles and ways of living and connecting with nature. They just don't call themselves pagans because it's still a taboo word, you know? It's sounds equally bad as calling somebody, you know, a human sacrificing Satanist, you know, something that has really bad connotations based on, you know, Christianity and movies, etc. Uh, and this is just lack of actual knowledge on what paganism is and what it represents. And it's okay, you know, it, we're still not there and we still vilify concepts we don't understand. But the interesting thing is that people, Christians and atheists and whatever alike, every year in different places around Greece on key moments of the year, you know, during the harvest, in the summer, uh, the first day of spring, uh, the first day, you know, the first month of the year, they celebrate pagan traditions. They, they started in, in ancient times and they've evolved and they still celebrate them every year religiously till this day. I find it very interesting that they don't consider them to be pagan. It just traditions they do and they enjoy and they're entertaining and everybody knows and it's a natural thing to do you know so for example I'll talk about something that I that I know really well because it stems from the area where I was born it's a tradition um, dedicated to Dionysus and Pan so I was born as I said in a place close to the biggest temple dedicated to Dionysus it's a wonderful place and you can hear people there singing in modern Greek about Dionysus to bless the harvest and to make sure you know the soil is fertile, etc. But every uh, in January, you will see people dressing up for two days using masks that look like gowls or you know they have horns and they have bells like the goats and they have weird faces that are scary and they have animal skins on them and they paint their faces and they walk around and uh, they, they hold that too and they scare people and they symbolize the ancient spirits that are either good or bad but they also symbolize mischief and chaos right and this is everything that the accompanying theosis of Dionysus would hold you know the Dionysus would walk around with uh, with his nymphs and the satyrs and Pan and they would all do crazy things and orgies etc. So this is where this tradition stems from. And the interesting thing is that I get goosebumps. Every village in the area where I was born, every small village has a different face and a different creature. So in one year you cannot really go and visit all of them. But they're all there, people enjoy them. It's a, an ancient pagan tradition that inspired the look of, of Trigo as well. And this is something that makes me hopeful that 
paganism will not be viewed as an evil thing or something that people don't understand in the future and we will get closer to people understanding that ancient spirituality is something alive it's not dead you can learn so much from it and probably you will be more at peace with yourself and with the world if you follow something more natural than where we've ended up today From what I could tell of organized polytheism here, the Hellenistic polytheism, it's not, it's very political from what I can tell. Uh, the few articles I was able to find, a couple of videos online. Uh, it's very similar to the United States. Is you know, it seems like groups either go far left or far right. This is, you know, of course, something we see across the board of religion. Is that religion gets too politically charged, too politically influenced, and so therefore it kind of takes away from the experience. So it seems like a lot of people who actually practice Hellenistic polytheism keep to themselves. And I find this to be true most places around the world, is that a lot of people will just get tired of the of the rules and the regulations that come with a formalized religion, something I fought for a very long time as well. So it seems like most people are underground here, or at the very least aren't open about it. Uh, most people, I, the people I talked to uh, actually today, they kind of kept to themselves, they do their own practice, and they didn't have any form of group ritual. But when I actually asked them, like, hey, you know, if I came here and I got us a space, I got us a private space, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, around Greece, and we did had rituals there, you know, and facilitated rituals, is that something you'd be interested in? And almost all of them were like, yes, of course, I would definitely come to that. So I definitely think people want a community here, but I think it's just hard. And, you know, from what I can tell, and, you know, again, this is not universal, and I'm sure there's people that do have groups here, but it does seem very scattered. Um, and from what I told, uh, was told, it seems like most people practice in Athens, any form of paganism here in Thessaloniki, it's less common, uh, you know, in general. It, it, this is a very touristy, uh, college town, uh, but otherwise it seems very Greek Orthodox oriented. Now, another thing I'll actually say that it seems like is part of the struggle of practicing these religions here is uh, this city is a great example for it. So I actually went to a site that was the Temple of Aphrodite here, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And Trago didn't even know about it. So we went there. And it is literally a small fenced in section in a dirt hole with some rocks. And we let, read the sign about it and, you know, they had excavated the relics there and took them to the museum here in Thessaloniki. And then they, you know, basically said, well, you know, we're going to try to reconstruct this temple at some point, but we haven't had time now. And that sign's been up for years. Another thing that's happening here in this city specifically is they're trying to build an underground subway system, you know, a metro system, but they're having problems. They've been doing this for years, apparently, like I think it's like si over 16 years they've been building this metro system. And one of the problems they're running into is as they continue to excavate and dig more, they're unearthing more and more relics as they do so. And so they're actually having trouble because they have to stop and they've run into something because this entire city is built on top of another city, an ancient city of the Byzantine Empire, of the Greek Empire, of the Roman Empire. Uh, and I've seen it for myself. I've literally walked by holes that have been dug for construction. And you can see the foundations of old buildings that this city is built on top of. So it is very interesting and you know from an outsider perspective really fascinating to me you know this is a very interesting his history I'm, I'm standing on a multiple hundred year old wall that's probably on top of something else and so i think that kind of reflects the people here they reflects the, the paganism here at least to some extent is it's been buried and it's been taken apart and reconstruction and as trago said um it's also been something that has been uh you know taken and then brought into modern you know cultural things where christians even worship and honor dionysus but they say they don't you know so again it's it's very interesting you know this very wall very much represents i feel like uh the state of paganism or at least contemporary paganism um you know at least here in thessaloniki and maybe across greece now, having said that, if you're a Hellenistic polytheist or a pagan living in Greece, let me know down below what your experiences are as well. This is something that is, you know, just limited to me right now, coming and exploring this place um, and talking to the few people I've talked to, and of course, talking to Trago and hearing his words about it. And so I want to know your thoughts on being a pagan here in Greece. From what I can tell, it seems fairly hard, uh, which is a shock to me, considering this place has such a, a rich history and mythology around, um, around their gods and around their, you know, the mythologies. I mean, it... it uh, who doesn't know about Greek mythology? I feel like most of the modern world um, know about Greek mythology to some extent. Um, so I figured it would be much more prominent here. But honestly, it has been hard. And a, a city this large, I mean, look how big this city is. And it's been very hard to find anything that is reminiscent of the Greek times, the Roman times, or really anything where paganism was prominent. All in all, I wish I had more time here. Four days is not enough. 100% it's not enough to get the full scope of what 
a religion is here. Uh, you know, a few stories from a few people is not enough to get the full picture. So I'm really excited to potentially come back to Greece and learn more of the story, learn more of the history, and, you know, and discover what polytheism is still like here and hopefully be able to attend. I was offered to go to a Dionysus thing uh, next time I come around and I'm just really excited. But really this is all part of my, you know, my honoring of Odin. You know, I'm still a Norse pagan. I still honor the Norse gods. And even if we have a gathering here, we'll most likely be honoring more or less, you know, the gods of Greece. But to me, this is honoring Odin because Odin was a wanderer. He, he wandered the world, study, you know, learned other cultures, learned of other people and brought that back. He gathered wisdom from other places. And so to be able to come to a place like this and just learn from other people that want to share their stories has been the greatest honor. And I really can't wait to come back and do it again. But I really just wanted to make this video, share those stories, share Chago's interview and show you this beautiful view of Thessaloniki and share with you my experiences here. So again, let me know down below if you are in Greece and you've had experiences that you want to share. It's only going to help build this better image of how we understand modern polytheism and paganism around the world. So thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you, Trago, for that interview. And be sure you're liked and subscribed and all that good YouTuber stuff because I will be releasing several videos filmed here in Greece across my four days. So hope you enjoy them. And until next time and until the haul, skull. Hello, it is me here at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed all these beautiful scenes of Greece that I've been kind of sprinkling throughout this video. I hope you enjoyed the interviews. And if you really enjoy the content here at The Wisdom of Odin and would support what I'm doing across the United States and abroad, uh, please think about going to Patreon. It's the way I'm able to do this. I mean, all the travel, everything that this happened, it's all because of Patreon. Being able to come to Greece, being able to, to stay here and work here and film these videos is because of your wonderful support. So if you want to join those wonderful people that support this channel, head on down to Patreon, have lots of great benefits, including our community Discord, live streams, early access videos, and even a book supporter tier. Any help is wonderful and amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and I really hope this content honors everyone who supports this channel. Thank you so very much. And truly, until the haul, let's go.